Uh, obviously, we are in lockdown week four here, four here, and you've been six in a wee bit me. six for you. Yeah. So, how have you been dealing with uh, things in lockdown in the states and training and like. everything else? Oh. Um. Yeah, I feel I feel like there's been definitely different stages to it. I think. Um, well, like we were just saying, for first two weeks it was like it seemed it was probably like the beginning of everything being a little bit chaotic in terms of everyone was stressed out with like going in around like the supermarket and like right, could okay. you get toilet roll and could you get like so it was the same stuff. there. It was the yeah. same in America, okay. Yeah. Which I was glad I'd actually before we'd been in national team camp, I was glad that I'd come out here for like a week to get set up because that week I'd actually gone and bought all like you know when you first come back you do like the essentials so you make sure you I make sure I had like yeah. toilet roll and kitchen towels and mm -hmm. washing up stuff um but as there was a couple of other girls who'd also come back from Europe at the same time as I had but they hadn't done that prep so when they got back they were struggling shall we say so, and, and you looked like so you said before that when you got back off national team camp you had you were told 10 days in isolation was that literally yeah. go from the airport to your house and isolate like pretty much i landed late at night on the wednesday so i'd come back to the, i'd just come straight home and just gone straight to bed and then i'd i'd gotten up the next day and literally it was like 9 a.m she called and she was like, where are you? And I was like, oh, I'm just getting in the car. I was going to get coffee or something, probably. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> strong chance. And she was like, yeah, um, scrap that idea. You've got 10 days of isolation before anything, which then actually changed to 14 days because that became like the government protocol. Yeah. Um, so like initially I was like, wow, that's not the news I wanted. But then, but then I was sort of like the weekend came around you kind of started to realize okay this is actually going to be quite a destructive few weeks months ahead with how this is kind of tracking and having having followed how it had obviously been in china and then having been in europe and seeing how kind of intense it become in italy and then spain where we're just being it sort of started to be like right this is yeah it's, it's not the just the flu yeah so um but then from then at that point in time you still didn't really know like how long you still were being i felt like a lot of people were being optimistic and we were kind of being told things with the club like we're working you've got to be you know they were kind of giving us like week long chunks of time so they were yeah. like we're gonna just like isolation for a week and then five days would pass and they'd be like okay we're extending out for another 10 days and then a few more days would pass and then they'd give us like another so you kept just kind of like bumping it back so for those first two weeks you, i felt like training wise you were like we need to be on the pitch need to be doing what we can so like all of us were going out and doing our little like individual thing or in like groups yeah. of two and we're still all going like all out pre-season yeah. mode like smash yeah. yourself <laughs> yeah. like and then i felt there was like a transition sort of period for me but i was like okay this could actually go on for a while yeah and like i think yeah. it's more important to do like what i actually enjoy doing and make sure it's not just like it's yeah it's quite interesting because even probably. like when you're speaking or like people not not just athletes but also speaking to people in business or or uni it's like those first two weeks and i was probably um one of the people that did it as well you're so productive like you were like yeah. right i'm, I'm going to make the most of this time mm -hmm. and then after two weeks it's like wow this is actually two weeks is only just the beginning yeah. are you do you live on your own over there or do you live with people um i normally have um a flatmate but she she plays for the u.s national team Kristen, and their camp was slightly longer than ours okay so when she got the news that we things were in lockdown, she went home. So she's yeah. in Portland at the moment. So she hasn't made it here. So I do normally live with someone, but I'm just living on my own just now. So. Okay. So that brings its own kind of uh, challenges. Yes. Um, 
But at the same time, like, I think it also has been nice. Like, I, I quite like, you know, just that alone time and having, like, home space is kind of, like, space to, like, chill out. Yeah, I think like in as well at the start, like there was an element of we were only allowed to kind of see a couple of people. So then you, we just were like so intent, like intense around like a few people. But I yeah. think like, there's only probably very few people who you could actually spend that close time with. Yeah, and and not have the the ability to just go away for a coffee or yeah, yeah have that um, bit of time by yourself. So like yeah. after after two weeks and you've like chilled your training, what's yeah. it what's it looked like now for the last four weeks? What's like how have you filled your days and um I've actually been really quite busy. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. No, no. I can um, imagine. Yeah, I think it's been like a good a good time to just initially I was like stressed out like what what we're doing like I, I didn't like it at all especially from I think it was easy for me to like or for most of us probably to focus on the fact like you can't play football and that's why we're all here and that's what we want to do and it's that whole thing of like when you can't yeah. do it that's all you want yeah um so I think like that was definitely the, that first two weeks too and then there's just been like a few other things that we're trying to set up um I want to get back to doing a podcast so I've been like trying to plan for that um there's been some like national team things that i've it's allowed me to have some time to like follow up on some of the things that we were doing kind of with um contract stuff and just some of like the player player group stuff that you know we're trying to set up and um so i've had that on the go and then because all this is happening i'm also the player rep for the club out here um and sort of set on like a, a board for that so then there's been like so many calls and things with that that have then had like kind of additional follow-up stuff so, so is that how the how are the club dealing with it because obviously like i've heard some clubs have like or businesses have their their line manager or one member of staff that a group of players would like liaise with and another member of staff would liaise with another group or with you is it just like one person mm -hmm is like across the whole like how do they how do they kind of manage not manage you but stay in touch with you and and keep you on track yeah we actually haven't had too too much um from that perspective we at the start we just had essentially like a daily email that kind of replaced like that daily meeting that you'd have when you first would go into the club yeah. um and then there's been fairly consistent chat with um like our strength and conditioning coach um our physio they're pretty active in terms of just like checking in yeah. we have to check in with them um we've had i think every player has an individual meeting with like the group of coaches mm -hmm. that's kind of been it um yeah. we try and do like we do like a circuit on a friday morning yeah i think i saw a photo of that uh, yeah, and, and uh, Andrew and Wiseman had put up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we, it's more about just seeing each other's faces. I think. Yeah, like, yeah no, like the, the balcony, but yeah, I think it's it's quite. I think it's quite important to. It's one thing you lose in a team atmosphere, like a team group, is that kind of um, banter, for want of a better word, uh, when when you're all together. So, yeah, it's interesting that it's it's not that intense on you, and, and it's certainly something that I think is quite important that. Uh, some teams it almost becomes like big brothers watching um, yeah. and I think also in a in a business sense if if they are like your line managers checking in on you like two or three times a day whereas normally they wouldn't and it's yeah. like it becomes a little bit and it's the same like a coach or S&C coach constantly like checking in on you it's a little bit like well I yeah I'm fine <laughs> yeah exactly and you lose that kind of trust whereas I think it's a bit more um you check in with me sort of thing like i'm here if you need me but if you're happy and carrying on and you go for it and check in once a week just say how you're doing that's kind yeah. of the way i've i've looked at it um because you everyone's dealing with it in different ways um, no, no. so no nah. hey, if you 
have you tried like have you got any like positives from the situation or are you like um trying to achieve i know you've said podcast there but is there anything else that you're looking at well on like a tiniest tiny sort of scale i've been trying to like do handstands like that's nice. okay. yeah. <laughs> which i'm sure you can imagine i'm like not the gymnast type <laughs> shockingly <laughs> i'm saying nothing <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah there was one day I mean like obviously just normally kicking my feet up against the wall Yeah. and then one of the days I had like I think I had a hoover or something sat where I normally do it and I was like oh, I won't do it there and I was like I'll just do it over in that space in the living room which is like up against my patio and like doors oh, yeah I quickly yeah. realised that wasn't the place to <laughs> <be>. <laughs> I genuinely thought I just about went through the door so um I think that's good though, like a tiny little thing like that. Like I'm, I stupidly got involved in this burpee challenge right, like oh. right at the start, and it started with five burpees, and then you add five burpees every day. So like oh. today, I've got to do 140 burpees. I did 135 yesterday, but it's oh. like it gives you if you cannot be bothered. It's still like I've got a group of mates, and we've just got this chat, and it's all just about your burpees and. Uh, it, it gives you that focus to the day like the, all day i've been thinking i've got to do burpees so and do you have to do it in one go or can you just like smash out 20 then go and have a coffee smash another <laughs> you, you, know prob I mean? you probably could but i think they get annoyed that you keep on sending little videos so i just time oh you have to video it. oh yeah you have to video it and uh so oh. you, i just time lapse it and so sometimes you like i'll add in a workout or um, yeah. like today I'll just do it's 140 so I'll probably do 14 sets of 10 on a time lapse and just kind of every minute on the minute just do another one and it, it just find different ways of doing it but it gives me that kind of like right even if I don't do any other exercise today or even if yeah. I don't have like a, a focus for the day I'm still going to get my burpees done and I'll still check that off my list and I'm a checker offer of a list person um, yeah, me too. So I think that's quite good having, even though you said it's a tiny thing, it's, it can be yeah. like, quite important to your day. Like, it means you get up. I know. I know. I've still been setting an alarm and things, which like, um, I don't know. Like, I just like knowing that like for the week, during the week, like I like to get up at like mm -hmm. 730. Yep. And, and then on a Sunday, I like don't set the alarm because in my head, I'm like, today's a Sunday, don't need an alarm. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, you're not the first person to say that. Um, and like keeping a routine being quite important for a lot of people. I'm the same. I, I just wake up really early. Wake up, go downstairs, get the cafeteria out, make coffee, bring it back upstairs, and we'll, okay. we'll sit and have coffee in bed, and then get up and go and have breakfast, and then get on with yeah. our day. And it just it kind of helps. I, yeah, I, I agree. The whole routine's important. Yeah. Um, if you. Uh, like have you seen any positivity around uh, like in america is it like the media or like things that are kicking around and social media is there much positivity over there or how are people looking at it um i mean the media here is i'd say the media here isn't positive um I've never known, you know, like a lot of people say here, like the media is very political, which I, I've always known. And, you know, it's like if you watch Fox and it's because your political party is probably more Republican or okay. if you watch CNN, then it's like you're a Democrat. And it, like, I've never, I've always known that, but never like, you know, I would just put the news on to be like, like what's, let's watch the news for half an hour when I have my coffee mm -hmm. in the morning. So you kind of somewhat stay like real, up to date and relevant yeah. and whatever. But I've noticed with this, it's like very extreme like oh, okay so that's been kind of interesting other aside from the fact it's like fairly depressing to watch some days um yeah. i think there is positives but i think i certainly feel like it's been interesting to have as much like time away from football and just to see and maybe that's because i'm older and more and maybe in a stage in my career whereby like you are starting to think of other things because I, I know from just being around a lot of the other girls like they are typically like um i don't really know what to do and i'd be bored if we couldn't get outside and like i've binge watched this show and i need a new show whereas like yeah 
I found like the total opposite. And so I think like it's that's actually been quite interesting to see like the different demographic of the group and see how different people have yeah, yeah, I've yeah. had different types of struggles and how maybe people I think it's good for people to identify that like especially in what we do that like sport like sport can be taken away from you so quickly I mean this yeah. is also happened but like could be an injury could be just a contract thing could be whatever yeah. I think like for a lot of people I think this will be like a really good kind of period where they go wow that I'm really grateful that sports back when it does come back because that's it's going to be something that will happen. But I think it's good to kind of have this reminder, maybe before the actual reality of it hits, where it's like it's not a six month thing or a three month thing. It's like yeah, you're not playing sport anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and when do you think it'll be back over there? When do you think you'll start back? Has there been any murmurings of that? Or um, at the moment we are they've the league have issued a statement say they hope that some small group trainings can start may 11th with the provision okay. of the league starting the end of june okay. um, however based on you know you kind of you get that email and you hear that and you speak to people at the club and you're like oh i'm quite optimistic for that and then you switch on the news and it's like the governor and California saying there'll be no sport in the state of California until 2021 and you're like huh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so then how can the league actually happen yeah if so all... I think that's the hardest thing for America is that it's such a massive country and for us to start the league we almost need like the whole country to be in a place that everyone mm -hmm. can yeah. everyone can do the same as what everyone else can do mm -hmm. so Utah hasn't actually in terms of number of cases and hospitalized cases and deaths, we've been one of the least affected states. Okay. But then there's like teams in Florida and teams in New Jersey, teams in Illinois, whereby they've had like severe numbers. Yeah. So, so yeah, then, then if you, it'll be waiting for the likes of those to, yeah. to kind of get through it before, yeah, before you can actually get back to it. Oh, well, yeah. I guess over here it's similar. They've not got there's not much um yeah. clue of when it'll happen or, or what will happen i imagine it'll all come down to the first ones to make the decision probably have to be like your premier league men's and then after oh. that you might follow suit with wsl and i'm not yeah. sure what they'll do over up here not a clue uh, i've heard so many uh different connotations uh, not just from the men's side, from the women's side of maybe they'll wait and maybe they'll do it in, uh, and join the men's team, um, like do a winter league rather than a summer league. So who knows? It'll, it, if people would look at it as an opportunity, then something, again, something positive might come from it. You might be able to restructure leagues, might be able to look at doing things differently. Yeah. Um, which I think is, has to be a, yeah, like people have to spin it on its head a little bit, like all of this, I think. Yeah. Like try and look at it as an opportunity to to make changes and whether that's from a, a wider aspect of a whole league or whether that's from a team or whether that's just individuals try try to change what they do. 